Are you feeling rejected? We all do. I've had more than my share of rejections in my life, but that doesn't mean it's not a stepping stone in your career, and we're gonna cover that right now. Coming up next on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. I just had a special request and because this one's a sensitive issue, I decided to do this video as fast as possible. Let's get this one out of the way. If you are feeling rejected because a job doesn't call you back or they say you're just not the guy, well guess what? It's gonna happen a lot. I would put money on it that I've been rejected for jobs more times than most of you guys that are watching this, guaranteed. I have applied for hundreds of jobs. I've been rejected openly, probably a hundred of those 200 times. Um, but don't let it get to you. I know it really does. But there are many reasons why people get rejected and they're not what you think, okay? So let's start at probably one of the top ones, okay? One of the top reasons people get rejected for a job is because of nepotism. The job did not exist to begin with. Now I know there was a listing and you think that there was a job, but that's not true, okay? So what they do is a lot of places will post a job and it's a legal obligation because there's a change in position or like I said, nepotism, they wanna take somebody over here and raise them through the ranks. Well, they're legally obligated to post that job. It didn't really exist to begin with. They already had somebody in mind and it happens more often for senior tech positions, okay? So that means if there's a biomed supervisor or lead tech, often what they're trying to do is groom somebody that's already in their facility or at another facility, they wanna bring them over to this one and that job does not exist for you. It's a legal obligation, it doesn't really exist. We all apply for it, it sounds like a perfect job because it is, just not for you and not for me. So that's nepotism. It's it's, they already had somebody in mind for the position, okay? Now the other thing, one of the other top reasons why people don't get a job is because of their specialty, all right? So let's say I have a job where I'm looking for somebody that works on GE monitors specifically. And I get a, I get a candidate who's worked on plenty of patient monitors, Mindray, some Philips. Well, guess what? I'm looking for somebody that's ready for GE monitors. Okay, I don't want to train them. I'm looking for somebody that's working around GE. So that's how some people don't get the job. They're looking for somebody that knows anesthesia machines. They're looking for somebody that knows ventilators. They're looking for somebody with a very specific OEM training and they don't want to spend the money to train somebody to do that. They don't list that in the job description, unfortunately, but that doesn't matter to them, right? There's a lot of things that employers should do as well to not waste our time too, right? But you can't change them, okay? So all you can do is accept the fact that you're gonna get rejected for jobs that you, throughout your career, haven't been specifically crafted for. Let's say somebody's looking for an imaging engineer and you have Siemens education, but you don't have Samsung or you don't have Philips. Well. If you don't have specific training for that model that they have on in their inventory, you won't get the job, even though you have years and years of this wonderful experience. Not gonna happen, okay? So it could be your specialty, all right? You just don't have it. Whatever it is that they're looking for, you don't have it, and I don't either, all right? Um, one of the things that hit very close to home for me is resume, okay? Your resume might not be worded correctly according to the job description. So your hiring manager can understand more about your job description than the HR people that are doing the pre-screening, okay? But he's not gonna get the, the candidate because you're being screened out before you even get to him. Why? Because your resume doesn't have specific keywords in it that point to you as being a possibility. My resume has done that too. Only I got past the HR screening point, but because I have a lot of management of biomeds in my resume, they said, well, you've managed a lot of people, but it doesn't say that you've worked on a lot of equipment. 
Any, anybody that's been in the career field for 18 years has worked on a lot of equipment. And I promise you, patient monitors and laboratory equipment are just some of those items. But I didn't have them listed on my resume. And I'm not saying itemize your resume and list out all your special stuff because that is just a burden to try and read through. What I'm saying is select your keywords and, and customize and personalize your intro paragraph. Your intro paragraph is gonna say more about you than the whole rest of the body of your resume, okay? So intro paragraph, make it personal. Do not use fluff words. I've, I've said that many times on this channel. And make your keywords in that in that intro, okay? So if they're looking for somebody that does ventilators, say in your intro paragraph that you work on ventilators in X amount of years, okay? If they're looking for management, say that you've managed a team of biomeds in your intro paragraph of your resume, okay? Don't just fit it down below in your job description. Fit it up above in your intro, all right? Keywords, resume, you'll get screened out before the biomed manager even sees you. It happens, and unfortunately, that's the way it is. So make sure your resume fits. Maybe there was just a better candidate, okay? I am a very competitive person, guys. I really am, by my nature. And I'm telling you for a fact that there are some biomeds out there that are really smart dudes, okay? You can't do nothing about it. I can't do nothing about it. Some of these guys might have volunteered. They might be outgoing people. They might have got their certifications, okay? They might have four-year college degrees in biomed, and that's what they're looking for, even though they got zero experience. I've seen all of these, and I'm telling you, sometimes there's just a better candidate. Either a better candidate on paper, or they're a better candidate for real. Because biomeds are some real smart dudes, and some of these guys are just really good at writing resumes. Some of these guys have all sorts of training, all sorts of computer certifications. There's lots and lots of reasons why somebody might be a better candidate than you or me, okay? So sometimes there's just a better candidate and there's not always an excuse for why you didn't get the job. That's all there is to it. So anyway, guys, it's not what you think. Sometimes you just get rejected just because. We can't, we can't surmise what that reason is and don't hang on it, okay? If you only have one hospital in your region and you didn't get the job, Ah, you might have to move, man. There's a whole lot of things that have to happen. Find another company, do something, network with people. If you're thinking about a job at a hospital, reach out to the biomed manager through LinkedIn. I say it all the time on here. Link up with people before you apply for the job, okay? Use your resources. Contact representatives for other vendors and stuff and say, hey, are there any jobs in the area or can you put in a good word for me? Use your resources, sell it guys, okay? There's sometimes there's reasons that you don't get the job and you just have to live with it. And I have been rejected probably a hundred times. And some of the times you don't even get the rejection letter. That happens, man, it happens way often. I think personally it's very unprofessional, but hospitals do that all the time. They'll never call you back and you just have to live with it. Don't suck it up and don't wait for them, okay? Do not wait for that job. Keep applying to other places. If they miss out, they miss out. I'll tell you for a fact. I was sitting on a beach in South Carolina. I flew out there. I was talking for the last two or three weeks with a company in Colorado, this beautiful company that made uh, chemistry analyzers. And I talked to a hospital in South Carolina. They were very professional. I flew all the way out there on my own dime. And I was sitting on a beach with a beer in my hand and this company in Colorado said, hey, Justin, we'd like, to, we'd like you to fly you out and uh, see our facility because we're really interested in you becoming uh, you know, a member of our team. I said, well, man, if I was any other place in this world other than here on a beach with a beer in my hand enjoying life, I would say, yes, absolutely, let's, let's give it a shot. But they missed out because they were unprofessional. They took their sweet time and I kept applying to other positions while I was talking with them about a possible position, okay? So this works two ways, all right? Either you cannot get the paperwork back to them on time and they're still, you know, having other candidates apply or they take forever and you are still applying for jobs. Either way, things just happen, all right? And all I can say is be proactive on your account. You can't control them at all. 
you might be able to write HR and be like, hey, is there anything else you need or whatever? But use LinkedIn, use your resources, be a resourceful person. Because if you want a job, you gotta be hungry. And somebody else is gonna be hungrier than you. That's a promise. So do what you gotta do, okay guys? Go for those jobs. Have a good day, everyone.